Hello and welcome to the January 16th, 2024 Select Board meeting. The board is present along with the town manager, town clerk, town finance. Um, let's say it for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of our meeting minutes from January 2nd, 2024. Make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I'll second those. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Terrific. First public comment. All right, I will close the first public comment. We have our public hearing for the adult use marijuana storefront 60 Route 236 Silver Therapeutics. James. We had uh, two comments for the public hearing. One of the comments was from the, one of the neighbors where they had some issues with patrons turning around in their driveway. Hi there. Well, Silver Therapeutics? Yes. Okay, great. We're covering that right now. Oh, good. Uh, we're, we're here. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. Just covering one of the issues you're aware of is one of the neighbors has brought up the, the fact that they, the patrons keep turning around in the driveway. Yeah. I talked to, talked to Josh um, from Silver Therapeutics, and yeah. he's mentioned some ideas about lighting to address that issue. Yeah, Which, we, we put a sign up. Uh, Please stand up to the uh, microphone. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> and uh, uh, name and... Yes, uh, I'm Josh Ferranto. I'm one of the uh, owners of Silver Therapeutics. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, we, we actually had a complaint regarding that with our next-door neighbor, and we put a enter sign um, on the other side of the driveway to kind of add some visibility to that and we're also putting some lighting on there which should illuminate it at night so i don't know how long ago that complaint came in but um you know we are taking steps to uh address that um james what neighbor was that did they did, what's their name or do you not have it it was the bella Muir's. they are i think 50 i don't know 50s they're in the 50s route 236 they're one of the yeah, we're we're 60, so I think it was uh, um, if you pull out of our driveway to the, you know and take a right, the first individual on the right was the one that complained, and then we put the the sign up relatively recently. So I don't know if this is a different person, and then hopefully it's been mitigated by now with that sign. Um, you know, we have to, to add lighting to it as well, um, just just for more visibility. I mean, I, I think you know, obviously you guys are aware of the road, and it's. A pretty fast moving road and it's kind of just the nature of of where we are but you know we're, we're doing whatever we can to um just make our store more visible so that that turnaround doesn't happen you said there was another comment was this is this the one that's it yeah um so the uh the clerk received a phone comment from stephen babb 52 route 236 um uh, his comment was he thinks it's a degradation to the community and he's not in favor of it okay and that was that was it um no details on that um any comments from the police or no other issues there um Does have any other questions for josh I, I saw I saw that you had recently increased the size of your parking lot. We did, um, yes. Is um, it is no? I drive by. I don't drive by there regularly, but I drive mm -hmm. by. It doesn't seem like there's always that many cars in there. Is but it necess 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 necessary yeah. to increase the size of the parking lot? Yeah, you know, it, it's just at certain times. You know, after work, weekends, sometimes there'd just be, you know, a line of people waiting to park and. That also can cause a traffic right, concern. Right. So, with the new parking, like all our customers are, you know, really happy about that. And it just, <laughs> you know, people are kind of pulling in areas that weren't actual designated parking. So this has completely mitigated that that issue. 
yeah. which is great. Yeah, I, I know several people who live in the area, and they have had no complaints. Nothing's been expressed to me that. about any yep. any difficulties there. Yeah, you know, no more so than any other business. Yeah, I mean, so. I, I will say we you know really enjoy operating in Berwick. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a former resident, and we employ a lot of people locally, and I can't think of any you know major incidents we've had that have been needed police other than someone going through our dumpster at one point and yeah it's been a been a joy working with you guys so. my only comment is that i you know drive by there pretty often going to the school or the dump or whatever and it's just it's a very beautiful building well you thank know, you it's, 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 i mean yeah. it's just very well designed it looks very nice you know, if you took out the signs, it might look like, look like a home, you know? Yeah, and yeah. so Appreciate um, that. If there's no other comments, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the Adult East Marijuana Storefront for 60 Route 236 of Silver Therapeutics. A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you for coming out today. Yeah, thanks. It was a little bit of a drive, but. <laughs> Thank you. Especially in this month. Yeah. Especially in 236. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Have Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. No reports of committees, department reports, appointments, unfinished business. Town manager report. Shannon Rogers and Josh Jones, our rec department, has been meeting with SAT 60 to discuss working together on the mentorship program. SAT 60 will be using our Building Bridges program as a model for high school and middle school students. Um, they're thinking to have a program that um, to mentor kids and as they are entering the eighth grade, they'll have a mentor, a past mentor, that's a senior in high school. And um, also working with the Building Bridges program connecting some high-risk youth to some adults. And uh, Shannon's done a, a wonderful job picking up where Angela left off. Um, we have a group of mentors, and um, just like we heard from one of the public comments, um, there's a huge need in the community for mentors. So it's exciting to see the town and the school working together on this project. The town website is due for a refresh. It's part of our four-year contract with a free overhaul of the website. We're working with Elise with Pixels and Pulp to work on a design. We'll have a new front page and some new department pages. And the goal, obviously, you know, we want it to look nice, but we also want it to be accessible and easy to navigate. So. Elise is working on the design now and should have some updates in the next coming month or so. So she volunteers to do that? She's paid. Is that something we put out for bid or? For, it's something that was incorporated in our, in our budget. So we already did that. Yeah. Yeah, this, this was budgeted in the last oh. budget cycle. Our Kittery Area Comprehensive Transportation System, CACS. It's an MPO, it's a Metropolitan Planning Organization, a lot of acronyms. Um, it's likely going to have a cost associated moving forward into the next um, budget year. As part of that MPO, we're gonna be responsible for paying a proportion of the match. That is part of our, it's called the Unified Planning Work Program, UPWP. This funding covers. Here is more. Here's more. The funding um, will cover the match that SMPDC used to cover, so their main planning development commission. That used to be covered through membership dues. The issue is that the membership in CACS has grown, the UPWP has grown, and there are SMPDC members who are not in CACS. Um, so now. This transportation system, we're included in, it's a group that meets um, sometimes monthly, sometimes about every other month, and we go over planning projects for the region and working with our transportation planner and SMPDC 
So this group includes Kittery, South Berwick, Berwick, Elliott, York, Wells, Gunkwit, Kenny Bunk, and Kenny Bunkport. What's the what's the anticipated match? It's about seventy five hundred dollars. Yeah, it's uh, based on a formula uh, that's mostly based on population. That completes my report. Any questions for the town manager? Terrific. All right, accounts uh, payable. All right. So we have a payroll warrant from January 4th, 2024, in the amount of $80,000. Four hundred twenty-three dollars and fifty-seven cents. We have a payroll warrant from January eleventh, twenty twenty-four, in the amount of one hundred two thousand seventy-four dollars and fifty-one cents. Accounts payable warrant number forty-seven from January sixteenth, twenty twenty-four, in the amount of one hundred six thousand three hundred eighty-six dollars and seventy-one cents. And accounts payable warrant number 48 from January 16th in the amount of $1,421,427.79. I make a motion that we pay our bills. Second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? New business. New business. Bid results. Banking RFP. We receive seven bids based off the services they offer and the interest rate provided we were recommending selecting Androscoggin and bank this bid is for a five-year term and that's what we have right now right now we have penny bunk savings We do we do use uh, Indiscoggin Bank for our lease financing, and for our short uh, we have we use them for some short term bonds. So so why would we switch then if Kenny Monk the percentage is higher and what would be the reason for switching? So Kenny Monk Savings actually they're offering five percent or yep yeah, five percent even. So they base it off this thing called the SOFR rate, and they deduct a half a percentage point. Wow. Wasn't there another issue with Kenny Bank Savings that led to this change, or wasn't there? Wasn't there like an issue they were having, or were we misremembering something? At one point, there was a banking report. They have a index. And they have a red, yellow. Uh, green system. Yeah. And at one point they were in the yellow for an extended period of time. Yep. And we we talked to some people that were involved, uh, kind of in, that were involved in banking, and they said they weren't. Yeah, it wasn't that much to be concerned. We, yeah. You know, they weren't in danger of failing. Basically. Is the Andrew Scoggin Bank green? They're green. Yeah. They've been in the green. Any additional questions for the town manager? So your decision to recommend Indochargen over Kenny Bunk is based on the point five. Is that the only reason? Yes, Lisa. <laughs> I was gonna say perhaps we get our finance director up to the microphone. Um one of the reasons is because right now they have us at a lower interest rate than what they could actually offer us. We had um, several banks when the interest rate was, was increasing. Um, we had um, several banks approach us wanting us to move the money and move our money at a higher interest rate. And we said no, that we would prefer to, to RFP for a bank. And <clears throat> I called Kenny Bank Savings and asked them to increase the rate and they would not do it. And the the bid that we have right now says that we would we would be at five point five minus the point five SOFR. 
And not only that, but they have a habit of sending checks back to us in our deposit all the time. Like the what date's wrong. Uh, it's like payroll checks. Can tell no, me. no, checks that we've receded. Um, I just had to go last week. What day was it? I can't. Thursday. Yep. Because somebody wrote one twelve twenty three. I mean, it's assumed that they meant twenty four. If um, you know the date's wrong in any way, they won't accept it. And they will not accept us just calling the customer saying, hey, there's a mistake on the date. Can we fix it? And they'll, the customer will say, yes, so we fix it. And then I'll bring it to the bank and they'll make a big fuss like, who did this? Did they come in and actually do this? So it's kind of a hassle. We have to have the customer come back, change the date, and sign. I, and I just feel like the way, they bid, they, the way their, their bid is worded, they can drop that rate anytime they want. Okay, so we'd have to change our checks and our yes. all of our payroll, and so we try to keep a minimum check um, stock, so that I mean, so that we, you know, if this comp like the last time I ordered, I ordered half of what I normally order because I knew we were going to RFP for a bank, so we wouldn't be wasting a lot of check stock. I know that they need stop stamps for the deposits downstairs, which we haven't ordered because we were going to RFP for a bank. It is, I mean, it, it does, it's an initial cost to change everything over, but once it's over, once it's changed over, it's good for five years and, and possibly longer, depending on if you want to renew with the same bank. Would payroll, would that be any extra cost with no. all? Or, no. All I have to do is, no, because we don't even use checks anymore. Or I'm trying saying, not to. So, Every okay. once in a while, one slips through. Yeah. Um, but we can actually run it, run an accounts payable check for that. We don't have to order check stock for the, for the payroll anymore. So, would it, he, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, you... Would each employee have to redo their direct deposits? No. No. That should be in the payroll system. Yeah. One of the yeah. concerns I had with switching over, and I don't... We, I wouldn't be recommending it if I didn't feel like it'd be, in, you know, yeah. including that cost. Something that Patty and I have talked about is just, you know, the convenience of having it right there. Um, and Andrew Scoggin seemed to really sell the fact that they have a, a courier service that runs often and they would... Do what they had to do to make it work for us. Mm -hmm. The other part too is they're they're more seem to be more government focused. One of the lead yeah they have a government banking division where Kenny Bunch Savings does not. You just have a personal checking account with them. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> so the courier thing. So if you get checks in, they're going to pick up every day. Or? I don't know. Um, Do you know they, that? They, um, they come twice a week unless we request more. Like during tax season, they'll come as many times as we want. They're already in Lebanon, so they just come over here too. I'm so hoping to... So Lebanon wasn't a reference? They just, I think he just told me that they just... Went to Lebanon. Went to, they just got Lebanon. The other thing, I'm hoping that we can still maintain some sort of relationship with Kennebunk to get change. Well, they bring change. Yeah, but sometimes we need it right away. Yeah. Well, I was thinking we could keep the water, um, try to keep the water um, account there. Oh, okay. So use two banks. Because, because the um, people oh. at the at um. the transfer station deposit mm. all their money at the end of the day every day every day they work so the transfer savings. station would still have to use Kenny Bank savings because it's it's local they, don't they would just have to but I It'd was be thinking to them safer that's what I'm thinking yeah because hmm. I mean the only other thing they can do there. is put it in a night drop here and then we would just include it with our regular deposit during the day that's the only other option yeah I wouldn't want to leave the money on site so the difference would be, the reason for switching would be the interest rate 
and they don't they send checks back is that the reason well with um, if we went with anyone else any other bank other than Kenny Monk savings the only reason we're depositing our checks at the bank right now is because they're right mm -hmm. there we, we normally you would have a check reader and we would make all of our own check deposits yeah so so that's automatic every day and then we'll be doing the work and then cash will be picked up cash will be picked up by Curry oh, oh. will so, finance be doing it or downstairs I'll have to do the checks because you have to have access to the bank account to do it but the cash can just I mean we've got two vaults right mm -hmm. So this is a change that you're in favor of? Yes. James, this is a favorite this is a change that you're in favor of? Yes. I know that you don't have as much stake in it, but are you in favor of this change as well? Yes. Okay. I have a few more questions, but I'll talk to Lisa about them. Yeah, that's the point exact point I was gonna make. Is, is I'm I'm gonna make a motion that we uh, award the banking services to Andrew Scoggin Bank on the recommendation of our staff for a period of five years a period of five years i'll second that motion any further discussion all those in favor thank you reschedule of the march 5th 2024 psych board meeting yes it's the primary election so I would like to postpone it till the next Tuesday, if possible. You don't want to be up Can't all day for the election and then have to stay the next day for, for a meeting. <laughs> and that's just, and that, all that is is the primary election, right? That's all that's going on that day? Yes. Okay. Um, so the following so the would be 12th. March 12th, right? Mm -hmm. Aw, seriously? Well, you, you can't do it? 12th. No, it's my birthday. Oh. Okay. Okay, yeah, I can't do that day either. I'm going to meet him. Uh, All right. I mean, we could do March 6th. I'm, I'm only being facetious like to be here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was just beautiful. Sorry. Um, but Lisa, you can't. Really can't. March 6th? Does anybody have any issues with March 6th? Got it. What? No. Huh? March 6th. No. I cannot be here on March 6th. Okay. I have a question. It's totally up to you guys. I, but I can do the 12th if that. I mean, I, I can change it if that's what we really want to do. I can, you know, not go, but I should. Is it a vacation? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have another meeting. Oh, but, okay. Um, I'm open to any other suggestions. If not, March 12th is a day. Well, couldn't we go back? I mean, could we do the 4th? It's Monday. Or is there another meeting in this room? I don't think there is. The night before the election? Yeah. Oh. I'm sorry, yeah, that's probably not a good idea. No. It depends on what is on our agenda. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. It was like last time, uh, last right. meeting, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Make it light. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't really want to skip it in budget season just in case. That's um, what I'm saying. That, uh, like yeah. to still get it done. Wednesday the 13th. I can do that. So yeah, we'd have. Opposed to a Wednesday, then that's the following means, Wednesday. Okay, so we so got yeah. the 13th and the 19th. Yeah. Does anybody have a problem with that? March 13th? No. Nope. Oh. Okay. I'll make a motion to re reschedule the March 5th, 2024 meeting to March 13th, 2024, which is a Wednesday. A second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Please remind us that we are definitely going to do that. I was like, oh yeah, we got to yeah, no. that motion. I'm changing the thing. <laughs> Play All right. <laughs> Proposed amendment to the naming town owned property and placement of memorial objects policy. James. So the purpose of this amendment is to set a discounted price at $750 for 501c3 organizations who would like to participate in the bench program. So I was approached about you know a, a, a discounted price, and um, I figured it would make sense to just do it across the board and, and, and set the price. And um, the reason I think it's a good idea is just encourages um, use of the program. So the $750 covers the cost of the bench, correct? Mm -hmm. 
correct? Most of the bench. And it, it, co you know, it covers three-fourths of the cost of the bench. And, yeah, it goes, it'll go back into the program. And um, we, we initially purchased six benches out of the, the TIF. Yeah. Um, which is part of our development program for Greenway amenities. So we can always do that again for just more from the TIF or, you know, set the 750 helps to cover some of those costs. So I'm just trying to make sure I understand this right. So um, is everybody paying 750 or is just the the 501C? Uh, Proposing the 501c, just the, if it's a charitable 501c3 organization that if they're dedicating a bench. On but if it's app, me coming off the street, what do I pay? It would be the cost of the bench plaque and installation. Okay. Which is, right now it's about $1,500. Okay. The so so you you say that's almost half. So a townsperson, say somebody's family wanted to donate a bench, would have to pay $1,500? That's, and, and that's, uh, so... Maybe, and I was I was going back and forth on that too. I think we maybe just set a flat price at seven hundred fifty dollars. Seven hundred fifty dollars. I don't know. Isn't that what? It, I don't know what you mean. Like that—that that doesn't cover the cost of the bench, though. Yeah, we got to cover the cost. Well, if 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 we if we're linking it into the the greenway and the walkability of the downtown area, is that's. Some of the some of the money from the TIF is can be used for that. You know, that's one of the things we talked about with the walking paths and stuff. Is that was all in the proposal for the TIF to use that to draw people into the downtown to make it more usable and uh, people friendly. So yeah, I, and I agree with that. I just think that there shouldn't be two prices. I mean, because citizens pay taxes, and if if they want to. You know, that's coming out of probably one or two people's pocket as opposed to a whole organization that probably has a better ability to raise money to dedicate a bench to the town. I think, I just think a 50% discount is a little. Here's my question. How much interest or how, how much, how many people have approached you about name, uh, using the, this bench program, the, the naming? So far, three have expressed interest. And what are the What's that? And, and one of them has been the 501c? One has been the 501c3, yep. Okay. And the other two would pay full price? Indicated that you'd be interested in, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm one of them. Uh, you know, I'm, from the very beginning, I've talked about getting the bench you know, to uh, for my, honor my parents. And, you know, if it cost me $1,500 to put a bench up, is I'll find the money to put $1,500 and put the bench up. But... Um, the 501c3s is, <clears throat> I, I would, you know, I, I don't have a problem with, you know, using some of the TIF money if it's available, you know, to cover the cost. But um, as far as how much, I have no no clue of what would be equitable or fair. And is, um, <clears throat> you know, as I said, the, the, the TIF is specifically to be used to in improve the downtown. Right, but can't the TIF be used for someone who personally wants to buy a bench as well? It's for the nonprofit? So wouldn't the price be the same? Price I mean the price the the price very well could be seven fifty for ever for everybody. And then that way as we go forward I can buy two benches. The memorial <laughs> <laughs> We just so happen to stumble this like this sure. idea, this memorial bench program. <laughs> No, I, I'm in total that's support covering of the memorial bench program. Yes. I just basically covering half for everybody. Yeah. Right, well, yeah, that's a huge gap. To say. Do were, we put a limit on how many benches, <laughs> so that we're not always paying for benches? <laughs> I mean, uh, well, no, because I mean, eventually too, they're going to go to memorial, go to the. the they field, they right? also all require board approval. Oh, right. Okay. So okay. Yeah. so nobody can just come in okay. and name a and name a. a, 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 a a bench for Adolf Hitler, and we have to just deal with it. <laughs> right. And we, we get to, we actually have approval of the naming rights. And right, the like actual, that. what's on the it's plaque. Um, he, my question is, um, I thought we had discussed the possibility of there being, if people wanted to pay less, they pay for half a bench. Like, you could have a bench with two memorial plaques on it, you know, and that, 
that would be the solving of the of the price issue. You know that you'd only have to pay for half. Um, we did talk about that. Yeah, yeah. but but you but again, you're the, well, the I mean, organization like, was gonna is gonna get a whole bench. So it doesn't really. Uh, no, 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 no. What I'm just saying is that, like, if oh, no. if the if the question is like, if 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 a charity comes and says we want to name a bench X, and they go, but we don't have fifteen hundred dollars, that's fine. They don't get a whole bench; they get half the bench. And somebody else who also only had seven hundred fifty dollars, they also get half the bench. Right, and I I don't I don't have a problem with that. I'm just saying is if you're going to use TIF money to install them and do that anyways. And can't you just come up with a reasonable price for anyone who buys a bench because then it's flat? I'm not saying it has to be seven fifty. Maybe it's a thousand dollars, you know, or twelve hundred dollars because the total is fifteen hundred. I'm just saying it should be one price for everybody, whether you are, you know, an organization or something of that nature. I just we've technically already subsidized it because we've already bought the benches. So <laughs> right, but we're going to get repaid. Right. Well, how much do the actual benches cost? Fifteen. Yeah, it's about it's about a thousand for the bench, two fifty for so a thousand dollars covers the actual bench, and then five hundred dollars covers the installation and in the, in the black, black concrete. All right, so if you make it a thousand dollars or twelve hundred dollars, you're you're covering cost, you know. And if it's a little bit more cost when they're doing other things, you can use tip money to cover that. I I don't I don't have a problem with the using tip money to put the benches in and covering the cost. I just don't like the huge gap between if you know a, a citizen who pays taxes wants to put one up and a nonprofit that wants to put one up. I just think it should be a little bit more reasonable. Equitable. Very equitable, thank you. So yeah. We'll we should probably table this for right now and come back to it with Yeah, okay. I, I like the idea of the policy that you have mm -hmm. spelled out here. I did like that. It's it's you know clear. I just the money thing just about, you know. So, we'll we'll come back. I'll be that. back with it. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> you'll be back. You know we love to beat you up. So, we will. Uh, do we need to make a motion to table that, or just we just say table? No, it's fine. Cool. Proposed expansion of the uh, to police parking and impound area. This proposed project will expand the police parking by six spaces and will also provide a space to hold impounded vehicles. Police have had significant issues with impoundment being held off site. There are liability issues holding vehicles off sites as they could be part of an investigation and large fees can accumulate that the town could potentially become liable for. This project does require planning board approval. Um, so tonight I am requesting to earmark some asset forfeiture money towards this project in the amount of 17900 and just seeking approval to be able to move this project forward and uh, apply towards planning board approval. So uh, hypothetically, if we um, uh, set aside this money for this project and the planning board kills it, the money doesn't go away. We still get to use the money later, but right now... It, the money, the the project is hypothetically funded if everything else goes through planning correctly. Correct. Yep. Okay. Is the PD currently paying on impounded vehicles offsite? There's been there is one case where if it's if it's held up going through the process, um, there's just recently there was a a good there's a real possibility that the town would have been on the hook for it. Been on the hook for what? For the impoundment fees. Okay. If a vehicle is held up in the. Court. So currently, right now, if someone gets a you know they impound a vehicle in a in a traffic stop, where do we take it? It goes to like an auto body. You, you should go to Firewalls. That's what I thought. Don't anymore. It goes to. They, 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 do, they charge. Okay, that's, that's what I was asking. That's, so. that's what I think you were getting. Yeah, they, so they, they charge. charge a fee to keep it, and it's a daily fee. And if a case is going through the court, I, I talked to the chief about this because we're talking about the community garden next to it. And uh, you know, if if say say a, a, a case goes on for months and months, and the impound fees keep piling up, a lot of times that vehicle isn't worth the impound. Well, and, and that was going to be my question because yeah. at this point, okay, yes, we're going to set money aside, but if we're already paying for these, eventually this just pays for itself. Right. Plus it's right. Plus it's in a, a I know. more secure location for it's the like police department. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like eighteen thousand dollars for six spaces. Wow. But I, I get it. 
the fence, everything. I'm telling, if I'm honest, 18000 for six bases, professionally done. That sounds about right to me. I mean, well, with the fence and everything. Yeah, yeah. with the fence. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, and two rolls and two axes. And, uh, no, I... I mean, the price is, isn't my question. Either. My only question is, 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 will this save the town money, you know, this, in about. the next couple of years? Will this, will, this, it, will this tangibly save us money in the long run? That's my question. I have to get back to how much, we, if we've actually spent money on impoundment fees. I just know that if a vehicle is held up and the case is dismissed, and now the person that had their car impounded for... Twelve thousand dollars. You said, "Well, we're not, we're not paying it." Then that's yeah. That's kind of where we're. So if if the if the police impound a vehicle and the case is dismissed, are the police on the hook for the for the impoundment fee? Not the not the person. I mean, I, mean, I would assume that it wouldn't be the person because it'd be seem seem arbitrarily weird to do that. You know. That's but, what they're. That's what. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have no problem earmarking that right yeah. now, but I would like to get hard numbers on that also for future reference just to, sure. to justify it. Yeah. Um, so I'll make a motion that we set aside $17,900 of asset forfeiture money toward the expansion of the parking lot for the police station. I'll oh. second that. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. Um, uh, no quick claim deeds. Abatements. Hello. Good evening. Hey, Paul. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Um, okay, we have three items. Uh, the first one is an abatement for, um, uh, personal property account 1016, 12 Sullivan Street, uh, Mint Dental. These, um, they were taxed, uh, incorrectly or improperly, I guess, because they did file a timely, uh, Betty application, um, that we overlooked. Uh, most of the equipment, um, except for a few items, were were eligible for the uh, abatement for the program. Um, the remaining items were granted an abatement back on November 21st of 23. Um, it is recommended that we abate the um, the personal property tax of one thousand three hundred and one dollars and ten cents. Any uh, questions? No, I'll make a motion that we uh, grant the abatement of one thousand three hundred and one dollars and ten cents to account number one zero one six twelve Sullivan Street, Mint Dental. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Abatement granted. All right. The next one is a um, tree growth penalty. Um, the subject property. This is our uh, subject property is map R forty nine lot three, located on School Street. It's a sixty two point eight eight acre parcel. Um, the subject property was placed in the main tree growth program in in nineteen ninety nine. Eleven point four acres of the property are classified as open space. The remaining fifty one point four acres has been classified in the main tree growth program. This classification provides for the valuation of land based on its current use as tree growth for commercial harvesting and timbering of open space um, rather than being valued as potential fair market value for uses other than agriculture or conservation. Um, when the, prop the property was transferred to a new owner on June 25th of 2021, according to uh, Maine statutes, when, it, when the land is classified under Mean Tree Growth Program, has been transferred to a new owner. The new owner has one year from the date of transfer to provide a new plan or provide a statement from a forester that the land is being managed in accordance with the existing harvest management plan. Um, so failure of, a, of the new owner to comply would result in two, resulted in two $500 penalties for non-responding before the property uh, must be removed from the program. So the assessing office, as of January 10th of 2024, the property owner has received letters uh, requesting compliance with no response. The notices were dated um, as follows. We sent one out on November 3rd of 2021, December 27th of 2021, June 27th of 2022, 
and July 5th of 2023. Um, they have they have not responded to any of these um, requests, and therefore we are recommending a tree growth penalty and an open space penalty be issued in a supplemental assessment, and a supplemental assessment be issued in the amount of forty four thousand one hundred ninety dollars. Have they responded? Have you, have you been able to get a hold of them in any way? Have you talked to a human being about this at all? Um, we've talked to them, but they've said that they're not going to, you know, that they don't have to do it. And we've insisted they do, according to Maine law. I mean, it's, a, it's clearly well, spelled so out. So you, verbal, you verbally have spoken to them. They haven't responded have. to others, but okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Right. And they're just, they're just stonewalling at this point. Right, right. And it's um, it's owned by a So Solar Incorporated, so we anticipate that there's going to be a change in use of that property at some point. Right now, it's still vacant land, um, but they still have not complied with, you know, the, being able to remain in current use in the tree growth of the open space program. I'd love to see them come in here and ask for approval of the solar farm and with with forty four thousand dollars <laughs> outstanding or whatever. Yeah. Um. Any other questions? I'll make a motion that we approve the tree growth penalty in the amount of $44,190 for So Solar Inc. for tax map lot ROR0493-3. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Okay, um, and the final one is is a, um, a tree growth penalty, basically uh, for map R052 lot two. It's a lot off of Old Sanford Road, 32.08 acres. Um, again, the um, when the uh, property was transferred, uh, it, you know, you need to file within the within uh, a year a new new property management form. A forest management for harvest plan. I'm sorry, um, and we have not. Um, we have contact contacted the owner. This is Steve Brown several times, um, and he has not, you know, been willing to do that. Uh, we contacted him on December 21st of 2021 and July 5th of 2023, requesting an updated plan. Uh, so the failure to comply has resulted in a second $500 penalty against this parcel. It is recommended that the uh, board approve the five hundred dollars supplemental assessment fee. Did you? This says second assessment fee. So you issued the first, and and we issued it? the first. That was, and I believe it was paid. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's confusing. Well, because we paid the first. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and then so he's, he's fully he's admitting he's, he's aware. Of, he's aware of the situation. He's just right. not done anything about it. That's right. very confusing. <clears throat> If you know the Any other questions? Now I'll make a motion to approve the recommended uh, $500 supplemental assessment for tax map lot R052-2 off Old Sanford Road. No second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Thank you very much. Have a, have a good evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. All right. Uh, second public comment. <laughs> All right. We have no executive session. Any other business non-agenda items anybody wants to bring up? Um, I'll just say that uh, I want to give a good thumbs up to Town Works. They were out there plowing the last two storms and and also, for some reason, they had crazy amount of garbage to take care of at the transfer station after New Year's, and they were out there doing their best and did a great job. Didn't hear any complaints. Town kept moving. And yeah. That's the best thing you can say about them. Um, so we are going to adjourn and go into our budget review. So um, anything else? I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor?
back. Hopefully. <laughs> I'm assuming. You can't see the preview. So be careful. All right, James, let's start this off. All right. Welcome to the first 2024-2025 fiscal year 25 budget review. Tonight we have a, I have a overview, and we have five um, budgets to go over. I'd like to start with town clerk, so she can go home before we get into the meeting things. That's okay with you guys. I really believe we were trying to stretch out her days as much as we could. <laughs> Yeah. Town clerk leaves the last page you have. Um, full full time wages. Um, we'll get into the programmed five percent for non union. I'm sure that'll be a discussion point for after. Um, it also includes um, union weight increases, which are four percent for the rest of the department. And then part time wages. This includes a part time customer service, and a part-time general assistant case worker. Other than that, everything's um, reflected from those uh, personnel changes. And then we just increased materials and supplies um, to increase to the anticipated usage. Mm -hmm. So overall, it's a 5.5 percent increase uh so you have election wages those are election workers right yes and you you didn't max that out last year so say same uh, is printing the same as also like printing all the ballots and everything no printing just is for the annual town report so would the election supplies be printing the the, the ballots and stuff like that yes okay um and it's general election this year, so usually that yeah, goes up. it's going to be a, a full. It includes full all the services we have the um, everything put on a thumb drive, so it's for the BS two hundred machine that actually takes the ballots and reads them. It's the printing of the ballots, so all of that. So everything looks pretty flat for the most part. Um, are you happy with it? Is there I am. Yep. Nothing you would change? Well, I always would change wages, but well, <laughs> my change staff your own is, wages. I'm sure we could my add staff extra zero. Is union, so I don't have much say in that. Yeah. And um, yeah, if I I can have a conversation with James about my wage at some point. Um, memberships. Mm -hmm. Seems like that's been actually like maxed out. In the, in the past budget. Yep. Um, we had two GA caseworkers, so that didn't work out. So those were two memberships that were paid for. And okay. And that's getting a slight increase. The deferred comp, is that because people are not choosing or not selecting to... I don't know yes. what that is, Lisa. It's the it's that's just the 457. Um, I think there's only one person, maybe two. It's one. One person that takes it down there. Really? Yeah. What's the, d yeah, I'm just curious, just what's one. the match? Or is it's 2% if you have Maine State Retirement and 4% if you don't have Maine State Retirement. Well, only one person takes it. Others need their wage to live on. In the now, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know that I do. Um, any other questions for the town clerk? That I think we're probably pretty good. Are there components, general assistance. Yeah. So at this point, we're already at twenty six six. I have twenty thousand budgeted. We do get. Um, 70% back from the state, but that goes back into the general fund. So typically I'm in the red. At least I would think about mid-year for GA, but that's not accurate because the reimbursement does come back to the town. 
but there is an uptick in GA applications. Um, There's a big push to go from 70% to 90%. Yes. 70% of what? Reimbursement, Reimbursement from okay. the state. There is a... Um, is that likely to happen? That's good yes. That's going to be my follow-up. <laughs> Yes, there. At least for if one it year. hasn't been approved already, I don't know. I should look that up, but I haven't yet. Um, so under food assistance, you budgeted a thousand dollars, and you only this is eighty nine for twenty twenty three. Yeah, that's probably accurate. Um, Food assistance, we don't see a lot of that. I also do Salvation Army. So if someone comes in for food, instead of putting them through the GA process, I'll do a Salvation Army voucher. Okay, so there's other options. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our biggest ones we see are electricity, fuel, and um, housing. Okay. And then the burial assistance, we didn't budget for that, but we spent 2000 How often in, How the, last, often, in, in um, the last couple of years of that even come there's up? There's usually two to three a year. Really? Mm -hmm. But we didn't budget anything for it? I don't know why that came out of the budget. It's been zero for years. But again, like this... You had the ARPA money this year, so that's our lot. Um, you used ARPA money this year for burial. Not for everyone, no. Oh. Yeah. If they qualified, I didn't. But have you had any since July? No. Yeah. Mm -mm. No, so I don't think we've had any this year. I think so we. So far. I think the reason why we put money in there for this year was because we spent money last year and we didn't have mm -hmm. anything budgeted so we we put money in there but then I know that there was at least one person that was that the barrier was from the ARPA money so you you had last few years you've had ARPA money to use so you haven't had to budget it and now that's you're gonna put something back in yeah we'll see at least two but it depends if they qualify also Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. But and is the qualification the same as? as uh, it's different because the client is actually the deceased. <laughs> so we have to get financial statements, um, have to see relatives that could be required to pay. A lot of times it's, it's always so referred to by the You're funeral okay. director. So we work with the family and the funeral director. Got it. Okay. How much are you seeing already with an increase in fuel and electricity needs in the town? Fuel is just starting um, to come in. I had two emergencies today, one last week. Um, how do you define an, emer an emergency? Like they're out of fuel and they need they need like a delivery today. How do you, how do you facilitate that? Like we work it out as best we can. Usually, it, it depends when they come into the office. If they come in at three o'clock, I'm not going to get the delivery that day. So it's usually for the But next I mean, like, you're, you're able to, like, call oil delivery and be like, we need a delivery ASAP today sort of situation? Mm -hmm. Do we have, like, a preferred vendor or do we, we use do. their vendor? We use Beeline, which is local. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he's great about going out to people. Um, I've got two homeless people that I'm working with now, too, that are in hotels. So that's another thing we're seeing. Once winter hits, we don't see as much CMP because they can't shut you off in the winter. So those will start up again in the yeah, spring. Yeah, well, once in, in April they get the disconnect notices, they'll be coming exactly. back. Exactly, so right. that's what happens. But then we lose the homeless emergency housing people because it's warm again, so. They don't come in. Got it. Everything looks low to me other than the rent assistance seems a little bit high, but I think I, yeah, I wonder if see, you could use more on the other things. It doesn't seem like that's well, a lot Well, you can the see the time. actual from 2023 is 22 to 44. Um, For rent assistance, yeah. Yeah. Same thing 
fuel, same thing. Um, well, that's why I saw the burial, but even electricity. But yeah, I mean, just because the rents are so high that you help one or two people and you're you're depleting. Right. You know. The way GA works, if it's an emergency, we can go over their allotted amount, what they qualify for. With oil, it goes by gallons. Every month is different. Like January is 225 gallons. That's as high as we can go. And that's January, February. And then it goes down every yeah. month. And we don't supply it in the summer months. Um, so the numbers you see for like electrical for a person a one family a one person household i believe the max is like 98.50 so that's all that we can pay towards cmp yeah. so a lot of times if they're getting disconnected i can go above but that's why you see 998 dollars thinking that's nothing but that's 10 people, most likely. Okay. And for the record, I mean, you know, 2023, 2024, 2025, these are, these are strange times we've been living in, but for the, yeah. the, the five years before this, it was $10,000 a year, and right. we didn't, I don't think we maxed it out any of those years off, no. in, in my memory, right. I don't think we did. So we're, we're, in, we're in unprecedented times right now. We're, we're, we're in the history times, so. Where does uh, where does propane fall in? What if someone has propane instead of? Um, we have to use whoever owns the tank. Yep. Yeah. So they would have to give us who that is. Okay. And they have the same regulations. I mean, I don't know much about propane. Yeah. To be honest with you. It would be gallons. the same thing. The okay. amount of gallons, and it's the going rate, whatever that is. Okay. Any other questions about general assistance? So we, we've already used 22000 for rent assistance, but yet in 2024 we're back down to 13. Yeah, that was my question. In 2023 we actually used 22000 yeah. Right. We approved 13000 and so far year to date we've used 7000 That's what I mean. We're on track to blow through that. Right. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Probably. Yeah. But again, that'll slow down come March, April. March, April. Okay. A lot of times people are in the process of receiving SSI or SSDI. So, so we have to help you. them until that happens. And they sign an IAR, which is kind of Social Security will reimburse the town once right. they get their SSI or SSD. Which brought back. I so see. again, it's something that goes back to the general fund. And again, all these numbers that we're putting out are pre-reimbursement mm -hmm. the state too, so. Yes. Yeah. So we will get most or all of it back? Right now, 70%. 70. Mm -hmm. But potentially 90. And so, if, and if know, we need more, we can reallocate from the general fund, you know, yeah. toward the end of the year. So it's not like this is, if, if, it, if, it, needs, if it needs a little bit. What general need. assistance is, is one of the two accounts that we can legally overdraw. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I never worry if I'm in the red. No. Because they reverse. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. So on wages, I just know that you've had a general assistance person back and forth. Mm -hmm. So you've been doing that job mm -hmm. when they're gone. How many weeks this year have you had a general assistance person? Um, <laughs> just, just what? Just a, you, know, you don't have to give exact. Two months? One month? About two months. I would say, well, maybe like one and a half months, to be honest, yeah. So you're doing the work of your job and the part-time person? Is that person part-time? Yes. Yeah, that's where I'm going with it, yeah. How many, do you know if there are other, the other clerks in the area, do they do both? 
some do some don't like the towns that we're in with GA that we use the same um, qualifying criteria it's Berwick South Berwick Kittery Elliott and um, one other one I can't think of it off the top of my head but um, out of those five oh Berwick South Berwick Elliott Kittery one other but anyway out of the five only two of the town clerks are the GA administrators if you get to the really big towns they have the entire departments just yes. for GA. yeah yeah so before this year the, how often were you without a, a general assistance person it was typically the deputy town clerk was the caseworker and yep. I was the administrator um, but we were seeing maybe 10 clients a year okay. compared to now it's like 10 clients a month like I said which is why I mm -hmm. wanted the deputy has a huge workload it, she didn't have time to do the GA um, I don't have overtime in my budget so she, you know she couldn't possibly do both so which is why we created the GA caseworker position part-time yep. and that's been filled now it's been filled but we just let the person go again so it's open right. again how hard has it been to stack that since we put it in the last two that we used didn't work out so I'm hoping the next third time's the charm what's the pay range on that Joe $21 an hour is that a range or a flat number that's a flat and it's I would take 18, it if I could. 18 and a half hours a week yeah I'd take it if I could <sighs> so when no one's there you're doing it mm -hmm. Typically, as the administrator, I would just oversee the program. I would do the monthly reimbursements to the state. Right. All of that. Now, you have to actually meet with the people, go yes. through the process, mm -hmm. and that takes time away from your other responsibilities. Yes. Okay. And are these. I imagine sometimes those people aren't overly easy to deal with and they probably takes a long time when they're in there it's some honestly some cases can take a whole day because you're calling to verify stuff um, arranging hotel stays if you have to yeah there's a lot involved at you know an easy typical case takes maybe a couple hours so just for reference down the road, because I don't want to take more time, but James, can you, or Lisa, can you, um, these are summary sheets. Can mm -hmm. we get a breakout of the department, um, like uh, individual salaries and mm -hmm. user service, like kind of thing? It doesn't have to be tonight, I'm just saying, can we get that general information? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Any other questions about general assistance? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's what I want. Yep. I think you're safe for now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Great. Have a good night. Good night. Thanks, you buddy. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Next, James. All right. So I want to hit some um, the high notes. So you have an over overview of the entire budget. While you're going into the individual budget items. This is a draft, obviously. Um, the process at this point, we sent out the budget request forms, what was it, maybe a month and a half ago at this point, two months ago. At least two months ago. The departments, they draft up their budget based off their needs. I did, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. And um, we met with them individually to go over their, their budgets, kind of figure out what are the needs, 
what are the wants, what can wait till next year, that type of thing. And then I've looped back around with a couple of them. Um, so this is a first first draft. I included both uh, operating budget and, and capital because they're they're obviously tied together. Um, as I mentioned, uh, we plugged in five percent. Um, I I know there's there is a town manager list list serve. This was a couple months ago. There's one other town doing five percent that I'm aware of. Um, a lot of them just do. <clears throat> the inflation um, and, and everywhere in between. Uh, the Teamsters general unit across the board is receiving 4%. Fire captains are receiving 4% and a 25% uh, cent increase for the captains. For a couple of them, that, that works out to 4.6%. The two police sergeants are programmed for, uh, as part of their MAP contract is 5%. And the uh, um, rest of the non union police officers are 4%. So the, the rest of the non union police officers? Union. union. The, so you said non union police officers. I didn't yeah, think there was. Union. The union police officers, 4%. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. I was like, do we have? Sorry, the only non union. Police officers are chief town and captain law. That's what I thought. <laughs> and then, okay. So there are one reserve officer, I think. Yep, one reserve. And the reserves are not in the union? No. No, okay. At curiosity, you said one reserve. Is there a flat rate or do they get percentage increases? They get percentage increases. Okay. Part of the idea behind the five percent proposal. So inflation this year, it's I think it's three point four percent. They closed the year. Uh, last year was eight percent. Last year we had six percent cost of living. Year before that, I don't know off the top of my head. I believe inflation was four and a half. I don't believe we had four and a half percent increases. I think so we have four. Four, so. I mean, I, we can put it, I'm sure, like, we can always loop, loop back around to wages. I can just go over the other other costs and just kind of like a working model of projections of where I think we're at if we decided to approve this budget, as is what it would be uh, to the taxpayers and what are contributing to it. Can I go back and just ask one question? Yeah. When was the last year that they did a wage study in Berwick? Um, we haven't done an official one ever since I've been here. I. Um, I mean, we can have one done. Um, we don't necessarily pay, but there's so many that are already out there, like the state does one mm -hmm. that's available. And I know um, um, Betsy has one. Yeah, I was just going to say, Betsy has one. Yeah. Plus, if you're looking at specific positions, um, um, Cassie should be able to do that just by calling around, um, going to the MLGRH group. Um, which Betsy collects anyways, so you might just get it from her, but I'd be kind of interested to see with some of these. Um, mm -hmm. So would you prefer more of a wage, wage survey and then do yeah. some sort of I mean, cost I would, of living? Wage studies, I, I'd be honest with you, I know that they're very expensive if you hire a company to do it, and I feel like that the information's already out there. You can just you tell. You know how much you pay people. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, you know, relative to the size, but... Um, and the, the plan for, so one of the projects we're doing with our, um, with both Cassidy and our HR consultant is to do, for, we're, on, we're in the process of reviewing our job, job descriptions. Yeah. So get to, get to really know what each department and each staff is doing and then developing an actual wage scale. So that's the goal. And I meant, uh, mentioned before that the goal for the wage scale would be to have it in place for fiscal year 26 budget. But that would already place people that are here. So that would a wage scale is most beneficial for people that you're trying to hire, recruit, or you know. But if someone's already here, it'd be nice to know where they are. Um, you know where their range is for that particular position or whatnot. Um, 
and that's kind of that's kind of outside of a weight scale that you set up because that scale once it's established will be for anybody coming in and then you've got to place the people who are already here but if they're not in an equitable spot when you put them on a scale you're just exacerbating the, the issue that you already have and the weight scale won't help um, that's why I'm just and again maybe there's nothing there. I'm just curious and some people may be over right I mean, some I mean, may be over some people may be under and then and a, a, a special circumstance like we just had with Patty, you know, she's been doing another job, and some, we might have somebody that's not doing part of a job that they used to, I mean, they could be all different situations of people that are already here. Exactly, that's why I'm saying it. It just, it makes more sense to look at that. Um, I mean, if everything's in line, then you say you have one flat rate, fine. Um, but if not, maybe you should look at, at some equity first. Out of that, maybe do a 4% and then do a 1% equity in other places, if that is the case. I don't know that it is. That's why I'm asking you. Right. So it's that that'd be an equity, uh, like a market based adjustment. Yeah. That's another mm -hmm. way of saying market based. Yes. Market. yes. That's exactly yes. it. Yes. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. Thank you. But instead of. I mean, it could be that your numbers are perfectly fine. Exactly. But we did, I, what she's asking for is more information so that we know that it's fine. Right. You know? Yeah. I think, you know, Noah already said it. We're kind of in, we're in different times, right? And. I think when you look at the, the other communities around here in some of the tax brackets, we all know how hiring is a challenge, and I think we just want to make sure that everybody's where, where not they can be. You know. Yeah, <laughs> and, and not only hiring, but retaining the, em yeah. the employees that we yeah. do have that we've already trained, that already have experience with our town, um, because none of these towns are that far apart that exactly. if, you, if someone is underpaid or their wage is not even in range, um, they're going to easily look to go somewhere else. Um, and then, and then, you know, we've locked, we've let it walk out the door. Start a look. Right. You'll probably pay, pay more. more. <laughs> so I think Noah said it right. Is, it, it could be perfectly fine. I don't know. I'm just asking for more information. Yeah, no, we we want MMA and you can check with Betsy and check out what the other. I know Bath did one last year, but yes, they did. Mm -hmm. Erica did. Um, yeah, I just too bad. It just it. seems like even salary data from one or two years ago it just seems it's good. already. Yeah, so that's it's it's already, it, it, it it's really is great. right now. <laughs> it's like trying to look at the real estate market from two years ago. What are you talking about? It doesn't match up to anything that today mm -hmm. is. That's why you know these outside companies that do um, wage studies. By the time the information comes out, you should just pay it for right because they take anywhere right? from twelve to eighteen months to complete, and you're like, I got the answers before it comes out. So I just wanted to zoom out before we zoom back in yep. to the to the actual section. So just, just going into some of the cost um, assumptions. We don't know education. Um, I think on average we've seen about a six and a half percent increase. So that's what we're plugging in now. Six and a half increase is five hundred and seventy nine thousand um, dollars. One of the cost that was offset last year that we're not offsetting this year is we used the fire station, uh, old fire station sale to offset the cost of the bond. So I'm just pointing out increases from last year into this year. The fire department, um, they were, and we'll obviously get more into this in the uh, next coming couple weeks. Initially, Chief Plant requested four new full-time um, firefighter EMTs and he'll he'll tell you on the 20th it's a need and it's coming um, but he's you know we took we talked and he's comfortable with going with two um, so that's what the increase you see there and that is reallocating some of the per diem funds for two full-timers but obviously with health insurance and yeah that's retirement that's where you get to that increase the the high note for the police department is there, like they requested last year, they're requesting a full-time officer. We're pulling a little bit of part-time funds, but uh, for the most part, that's the increase you see in that budget. Public The public works increase is actually just by the fact of lead times in our lease program. We had a vehicle come off the lease purchase program. 
So we dropped the budget by 60 some thousand dollars last fiscal year. So if you compare the budget from last uh, two years ago to this year, it's a pretty, it's a pretty reasonable increase. Um, so one of the things we, we, we've talked about is um, we have two pots of money we pull for road, road budgets. We have undesignated fund balance and we have the tax base. So proposing to increase that by 50,000, which would mean we're funding out of the taxpayers 300,000 300, and proposing to use 500,000 of a designated fund balance. So overall $800,000 for road paving. Um, for the, the library increase, that's a part-timer going full-time and that will allow the library to be open a full day on Thursday. They open at 2.30 on Thursday. This would allow them to open up at 8.30. So those are the, those are the, the major increases. And like I said, we'll, we'll get more into those as the budget cycle unfolds. But I just wanted to hit the high notes to give you some of that context. And that education amount is not set in stone. That's just your prediction. Mm -hmm. And they meet, what, tomorrow? I think, I think the, the, uh, Thursday. Thursday. They meet this week or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thursday. So, are they started? Have they have they been working on their budget? I've been, I've been watching all their stuff. Um, they haven't been publicly, but I'm sure they've been working on yeah, it. Yeah, I'm sure that's showing. Yeah, yeah, they're going to drop a sixteen million dollar budget on their faces. So yeah. So a little bit further down, you have. Um, let me just see it. I marked it. Town clerk increase. Is that is that a wage increase? That just is just the, the that's just the overall budget increase. Okay, overall office. So it's the exact increase. Um, so that's that five point five percent increase. Okay. So that's the entire budget increase from the last fiscal year. And you're budgeting twenty thousand for the paid family leave. Yeah, because it, 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 it comes effective January one, twenty twenty five. So six months. So six months in. Six months. Right so back. that's yeah. It's going to be really curious to see where that goes. Yeah, that's <laughs> good benefit, but yeah, that's going it, to be. It's, it's definitely a good benefit. It's just um, I've been mm -hmm. watching very closely where it's been coming out of and, and some of the, I'm sorry, the lack of requirements to qualify is just amazing. It's, it's, I think it's going to get way used way more than people anticipate. No doubt about it. Uh, we'll go into uh, planning in future. I do have a scenario for planning that it does not include a director of community and economic development. I'll have in the budget an option that shows you what that looks like by using TIF funds and the tax base. So that's something I want to propose to the board to consider, start that dialogue. So again, um, we'll, you'll have full budget books by the next meeting. They'll have the budgets, the wage sheets, budget justifications, and more data and charts, more colorful <laughs> charts. Huh. So with all that said, and with some projected revenues, um, we are looking at a pretty sizable tax rate increase of $1.11 from 1832 to 1943. And that would represent a 6% uh, increase in tax rate. Uh, I, will, I will note, um, so by doing our revaluation, the homestead will become a full value. And based on a, a $300,000 house, that will save $73. So a, a grand overall increase for a homestead we project to be $260 in, in added property taxes. And I do want to note that we are doing the reval and tax, the tax rate will be lower, but I just wanted to be fully transparent that if this budget goes as proposed, there will be an actual tax increase that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the revaluation unless someone's property value went up. 
but everyone's what's expected with the reval is everyone's property value is going to go up. But if we kept the budget the same, the tax rate would go down. Tax rate's going to go down, but it will go down a little bit less because the actual amount of taxes we are charging are going up. Your house is worth more. You're paying more, but the tax rate won't You're reflect tax rates on the house. On the homestead. Yep. On the back, it just shows the breakdown of town and education in different ways. The budget breakdown is pretty interesting if you look at the percentages. I have some data from a few years ago. I have data from 2020 that I'll, I'll bring forward the actual um, breakdowns fairly similar going back in the years it's and I wanted to next on the next page for capital this is in the draft form uh, some of these will need to be reduced we recently did some calculations on the undesignated fund balance the estimated spendables at a million and projecting that our revenue sharing will come in at two hundred thousand dollars higher than what we estimated. So I'm estimating our fund balance is around one point two million dollars and it fluctuates. And we are not we're not anticipating the fund balance to grow like it has in the past. So for next fiscal year we're not gonna have a million dollars to spend on fund balance. So I wanted to point that out going into this budget season. Uh, the capital improvements shown, FIRE has pretty standard requests for their capital to stay up with their equipment needs. Air replacement is one of the fire trucks that is old and we know we're going to need to replace. The Tax DOT match, trying to squirrel away some money to go and we can go and take and go get 80. That that's a 20% match to go get 80% of a grant. With police, we're cons considering or proposing we're going away from a lease to a purchase program rather than leasing vehicles, purchasing them all right. Now that interest rates are as advantageous. And police is, uh, has a security system. They need to update uh, for public works. The their fuel control system is near end of life. As I mentioned, for roads using half a million dollars of undesignated fund balance and the other $300,000 from taxes. Uh, air compressor, they have an air compressor from, it's very old. You can see. <coughs> and then for town hall, um, bathroom, we had bathroom remodel in there for a while, but I don't think we need to remodel our bathrooms. We can do some, you know, cheap and cheerful improvements. Uh, I plugged in 50000 for the, the clock tower railing. I don't know if that's in the ballpark. I don't... <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> that is... Uh, that <laughs> is uh, I, it's hard to say. It, it depends on how badly the underlying structure is. From the inside, it all looks good. You were up there last week with me. Um, inside, it all looks good. You know, it's the the railing and the decorative parts on the outside that are showing the worst of the wear. Um, I don't know is when they redid the clock faces, the contractor then said that we should probably look at the copper on top of the dome. Is it doesn't appear to be leaking, so we might be able to get away with that. But you know, I, I did get in contact with uh, Jeff and uh, we're trying to set up a time when we can look at that. The other needs we know we're going to need to replace the front town hall steps in the coming years. Um, the building should be sealed and waterproofed. 
and then we have a we need a new um, video security system in town hall. And we do have so we do have as well eighty thousand dollars in contingency, and then we have how much do we have in Lena Clark? Something like thirty eight thousand. Um, I thought it was fifty. Fifty thousand. Okay. It might be thirty eight. So mm -hmm. we might be able to pull from contingency and and Lena Clark to be able to help share some of these costs to get that overall number down. Um, we pull from undesignated fund balance to offset the tax rate to help stay under LV1. So that's that last number. So you can see the grand number there, which we may be able to find that for the fund balance, but that would effectively almost zero us out for, you know, we're starting from almost zero going into fiscal year. 26 for fund balance. So obviously, these numbers will be revised over the coming weeks. Um, to just we obviously want to make sure we set ourselves up for the next fiscal year. Isn't there a minimum amount that we need to keep in undesignated funds? Yes. yes. Yeah. So this when I refer to spendable, they're spendable, but then the other parts just. So Forget when you it. say we are zeroed out, you mean we're at the minimum amount that we're allowed to have in undesignated funds, not that there's literally zero dollars. Correct. Okay. Just want to make sure that's clear. Thank you for clarifying that. Because that was not that. clear the way you said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, zero dollars for spendable on balance. So that, that covers the... Um, the high low, the high high notes. Well, I'm sure we'll tear it all apart as it comes up. So, but thank you for the overview. So, what I heard for what we want to do for the wage increases is, is to look at equity market rate, and then come back at some sort of cola. Lower color across the board, and then equitable increases where they matter. It's not. Well, it it's depends not about, on what we find. Yeah, it's not about lower or higher. It's just about justifying what we're doing. Right. You know what I mean? If you're going to say everybody gets four percent, four and a half percent, five percent, or whatever, you know, show us something that says that that's justified in the area with the jobs, or whatever. It might need to be more than that. It might need to be less than that. Right. You know, it might be need to be more selective than that. You know what I mean? Some people might be already getting paid more or, uh, or not, are already getting paid enough or more than what their market value is for that job and they're getting the same flat rate increase as everybody else is. They might yeah. not get that, they might not, you know, warrant that same increase. Other people mm -hmm. might be getting paid less than their market value and need a slightly higher increase. You know what right. I mean? Right. So if you, if you do like a 3% increase across the board with the availability of 2% to assist with the equitable uh, equity raises if need be but again you don't need that know that until we get more information yeah so it's, it's, not, it's not that it's not that your number is wrong or right. it needs to be lower or higher it just needs to be more justified right you know you know what we have in front of us is basically you just <coughs> saying I'm gonna give this this amount of people this this amount of raise and we you have to go okay or no and we don't have the information to make that decision so. And another thing, when we look at the payroll warrant, the numbers are all over the place. So it would be nice to know how on things are or not. Right. Well, Frank, right now, I mean, based on the last town report, the highest paid people in the town are the police officers because they get overtime and, right. you know, they, yeah. they, they, do, they do a ton of stuff. Usually, you know? yeah, but still, it'd be police good and fire are usually yeah, in absolutely. every town, even yeah. in, like yeah. you see Portsmouth and Dover, and you'll see... The town, you know, the city manager makes this, but the highest paid person or the second or third one is a sergeant. Not yeah, even, like, no, yeah, absolutely. Like, not yeah, even the police chief. And you're yeah, like, yeah. how did that no, happen? Well, it's because Overtown. that guy doesn't That's have it. a wife and kids and family. <laughs> yep, and he's exactly. like, I can work a hundred hours a week. Yeah. I ain't got nothing else going on. I'm gonna retire by the time I'm fifty-five. Well, they're three years <laughs> away from retirement, and they are boasting up their annual yes. salary. Yeah, they work in every. There's CMP detail out there. Look at this. This random officer made $150,000 last year. The police chief only made $125,000. This is crazy. Yeah.
All right, looping back to general expense, our workers' compensation insurance is decreasing. Because we do such a great job? Because of our uh, liability <laughs> rate. Or? Yeah, our mod rate's going down. Because we do such a great job. No, right. well, we didn't have any injuries lately. Yeah, That's what I mean. Yes, exactly. <laughs> are you guys in the safety program they have? That yes, if you we are. participate we're on tier two, we're working on tier three. Yeah, it helps. Mm -hmm. So why are legal fees dropping so much? We uh, increased it. For one, we spent that seventy-two and twenty-three. That's also we were able to get some of that. All that back, and we had a lot going on. Quite frankly, in '23, that's not as much going on this year. So I don't anticipate. I, you can see that year to date, we're at seventeen thousand. So we're tracking. Okay. Yeah, a couple of years ago, we had those couple court mm -hmm. cases with the uh, appeals board, and yeah. they got dragged on and on and on and back and forth and. We spent a lot of money on lawyers for stupid stuff. Where have the increases been this year? What you're saying, that it went up, it's going to go down? It went up in um, fiscal year 23. So this year, this fiscal year, it's we're, we're actually, pretty, compared to last year, it's about half. Yeah. So it's... Bernstein Shore is great. They, they cover it. We have a dedicated land use attorney, dedicated lab, labor attorney, dedicated finance attorneys, foreclosure attorneys. So we deal with different specialists. And we also have Betsy now. So a lot of the HR stuff is going through Betsy as opposed to the attorneys, right. which is a lot cheaper. Yeah. See emergency services getting crushed with uh, 911 calls. Yeah, PSAP, that's a uh, contractual increase. Yeah. Oh. Audit services, um, I think this is RFP for the audit, so we know that that's, and, and we ha we're going to have, um, we're going to have to have the single audit, so that's more money. Because so you're getting the yeah. federal grants? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Have we're expecting to spend quite a bit of federal money this year. Yeah. So. Street lights. What were they a couple years ago before we got the LEDs or whatever? What was it like sixty thousand dollars or something? Oh yeah, it was huge. <laughs> <laughs> the first year. Yeah. Those lights paid for themselves. It only took three years. So. Yeah. Any other questions about general expense? And you, you said the health insurance. You guys are on a rating, so I was. The town pays so much, the employee pays so much, and then it went up. You guys went up so so much. This You have two companies, so did both of them go up approximately the same amount? Um, so some have the health trust and some have allegiance? Yeah. Okay. To cover, town pays 85%. So it's Allegiant an 85. went up 3%. So you... Yeah. Allegiant Union. Um, the health trust went up 4.25 percent. And in the in the CBAs, do they compensate for that and increase each year, or do you have a set like at the beginning of the CBA for the years of the, of the contract, or is it broken it's out? Like, like if it's a three-year contract, is one year the the town contribute this much, the next year contributes this much? No, it's it's flat. It's eighty-five fifteen. So you have percentages in the CBAs. Yes. Okay. Okay. And is it equal to the non-union? Yes. Okay. The split? 
5515. Yeah, that's across across the board. Right? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's good. Great. Yeah, general expense. It's a one one point four percent decrease overall. Going on to town administration. This is a seven point eight eight percent decrease from last year. We outsource one full time position to for payroll MRI. So that's what you see in the reflected in the contracted services. Mentioned in my notes, uh, we have one larger scale project that we'll be doing in that in the, that fiscal year, which is we'll be working on formalizing a pay scale. I think in the next fiscal twenty six year budget, we'll be ready to start decreasing her hours. Um, she handles she has a lot of the no anything disciplinary go through her just to make sure we have things buttoned up. Is she training Cassie on these these kinds of things so that she can just oh, yeah. kind of move yeah. over afterwards? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Cassidy's um, Cassidy's always involved in everything that happens. So as she trains her, she'll start taking it over and Betsy will start moving them. Yeah. One. She's SHRM certified now, right? Yep, she is. She's SHRM certified. Oh, she took. did she take the SP or the yep, CP? The, the first one. The CP, yeah. Yep. I think she has to wait three years for the second one. For the second one, yeah, in between. She's, but yeah, she's, from the beginning, she took a lot, um, just onboarding and just streamlining our process, unifying our processes across the departments. We still are working on that. Uh, but yeah, she's taking on more and more and more. Just kind of fitting into the role. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I think Betsy and Cassidy hit it off as well. Yeah, they do. So. Well, that's good because then at some point she can kind of roll on her own. And then if she has a question, it's, it's a phone call. It's not, it's not necessarily being invoiced from Betsy because I know Betsy is very generous with her time outside of that. So, mm -hmm. you know, that'll save you both legal fees yeah, and yeah. consultant fees. The only reason it's not really reflected in, the next, in this fiscal year budget mm -hmm. is just, like I said, I think we have one more larger scale project. When Betsy was brought on board, one of the things we talked about was one, you know, revise our personnel policy look at job descriptions, department head trainings. Yeah. Yeah. Good. As this is the time to, to talk about it, do we want to discuss select board communicate uh, compensation? Absolutely. Now's the time. <laughs> well, I was more speaking to the board. Oh. <laughs> James, like, oh, I just went back there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's been the same forever. Do we want to keep it the same, or do we want to talk about an increase of any kind? Is that the way it is? I'm alright. Oh, we yeah, thought we all did it for the love of the job. <laughs> Well, we yeah. did. When you look at the dollar amount, we were <laughs> just, that's what I did. <laughs> well, at some point, it might as well just be zero, <laughs> you know, with, with the way inflation goes. Mm -hmm. but, it can uh, go yeah. that way, too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, any other questions about town administration? Next one, James. All right, we are on to town hall. The um, electricity is proposed to go up a thousand dollars. Custodial services, uh, after a very long time, we're switching custodial services. Our past janitor retired. We had been interested in looking at 
different services anyways, so it was a good opportunity to go out and seek out a different company. Who'd you go with? And they're doing a good job. I was, was surprised. <laughs> Uh, Clean One Janitorial Services. I believe they're out of Sanford, I think. I want to go back to electricity because I'm confused. Um, in 2023, we budgeted 8000 almost spent double that, 15800 so almost 16000 And then in 2024, we budgeted 12000 Year to date, we spent 10000 but you've only requested 13000 for 2025. So, why are you, one, why is it so much more than what we're budgeting for? And two, why aren't you asking for what we actually need? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a good one, too. No, nice. I thought so. <laughs> we should put 16 in I'll go back and do do a. Uh, we have um, we have spreadsheets all set up for electricity, so I'll dump some numbers in there and figure out what's going on with that. But I think that should be sixteen thousand. <coughs> I mean, sixteen would be more appropriate based on what we paid in twenty twenty three. But also, why in twenty twenty three did we pay almost double what we budgeted? Like, did something happen that we weren't aware of, or? CMP changed well, their rates. Yeah, but I mean, they didn't double their rates. I am curious about what 2022 was now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, what was 22? When did, when did the fire station come online? Um, that's uh, possible, but it's Town Hall, though. That was 2020. Yeah. Yeah. And this is Town Hall? This is Town Hall. It would, it, would come under, it would come under their budget. Yeah. yeah. So. Are you guys leaving the lights on when you leave? <laughs> Sometimes they are. Somebody is <laughs> living. <laughs> Somebody is living in the basement. <laughs> we got mini splits, and I'm wondering if maybe that's what it means. Mini splits? Oh, electric. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Electric AC. Oh, yeah, that's when we didn't start. That's supposed to help, not hurt. Yep. Isn't that supposed to help? What's that? It helps your fuel. It helps. Cost. It helps. Uh, not your electrical cost. It's going to help your. Yeah. It just helps your fuel. Hey, not the electric. You know, Robin, Peter, Peter. Yeah, that, that's right. That's, that's the year we started paying for the. I'm pretty sure that's the year. Yep. Where are the dehumidifiers in there? Yeah. Definitely needs a lot. Why can we take 3000 from somewhere else? <laughs> from fuel oil. The selectmen. <laughs> Well, That's not in this budget. Well, bring a jacket. <laughs> well, year to date, it says we only spent twenty seven hundred on fuel. So, I mean, yeah, but we're just we're, we're just getting started on fuel, really. Mm. That and the, and the and the boiler was down for quite a while this summer. Yeah, <laughs> that was its own expense. What about building supplies? What do we get going on there? Building maintenance, right? Yeah. The, no, supplies. Yeah, building supplies, forty-five oh, hundred dollars. Yeah. We've only spent two hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, it looks like a little money there, maybe. Mm -hmm. No, there maybe. really isn't. No, there no because um, I really don't think there is. Yeah, what do we need? Well, we can revise. We'll move some stuff around. Yeah, we can make it work. We can, yeah, our electricity definitely needs to be increased. Yeah. Um, um, also, maybe bring us back numbers for 2022, 21, 2020, so we can see if there was something in 2023 that specifically caused the big jump. Yeah, and electricity you know. mostly. Yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah. And maybe there's just one switch somewhere in the building that we need to turn off, <laughs> yeah. and then everything will be fine. I don't know. Is it the 24 hour webcam? I don't know. But whatever it is, <laughs> we're going to know. <laughs> Well, <laughs> it's, it's a big difference. It's so, I agree with you. I agree with you. We'll figure it out. Yeah, so you can, you can hire people to come in with like detectors to find out where phantom yeah. power is going. Something that does seem wrong. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions about town hall budget? No. Debt service. There's by feature of the way that bonds work and paying off interest each year is a little bit of a little smaller payment. So you see a 1.3% decrease. 
And we don't have a choice on this, so. Yeah, it's, it's all so in. Is is the fire department, the fire station, is that our only outstanding bond that needs to be paid off right now? No. We still have the clock tower, the clock, we did the, the clock, clock tower, tower, the, the windows. windows, the auditorium windows, and a fire truck in one bond. Okay. And we have the water bond, but we haven't done anything with that yet. Yes, but that's water. So yeah, uh, separate yeah. from separate from everything else. Got it. Any questions about debt services? Transfers and transfer. Oh, speaking of bonds, one of the transfers is the there's an old water bond when we broke the yeah. That's going to end in 2026. We transfer $21,634. $21,634. We transfer. The taxpayer pays half the, half the payment for this bond. It ends in 2026. So we've got two more years to budget for it. Okay. Are going to it transfers? No, it's just the it's on, so it's on another night. It's on February 20th. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have transfers here. Oh. No. Oh. Oh. I just ended up on our agenda for tonight, but not on the. Okay. <laughs> James, paperwork. Come on. Get it, to, get it together. Let's go. I put it on the agenda too. It's so. Told you, can you the binders to put it all. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's so so it took them all. Didn't bring them back. <laughs> She's busy with <laughs> GA to build binders. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> can I yeah. have those? Yes. The only thing that's uh, for yeah, transfers that half Excuse payment me. of the water department. That's that's a bond from 1999. It also includes a ten thousand dollars contingency. All right, so. We're going to do this again three more times, at least. Yep. At least. So next meeting, Tuesday, February 6th, we're doing library, police, planning and code, assessing, BCM, and public works. So I'm assuming we'll have representations from the library, the police, and everybody else to come down and talk to us. Yep. Uh, terrific. Any other questions, comments, concerns, conundrums, riddles, <laughs> anecdotes? All right, uh, I move that we adjourn. Second. All those in favor? We already did. Did it again.